The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday here at FRC Media. And just about every Wednesday, we spend a few moments with the mayor of the city of Fall River, Mayor Paul Coogan, who joins us again this week. Mayor, how are you? Doing good. Nice day. Going great. I know. It's a good start to uh, to our early fall season. I actually want to start with uh, something that actually happened on Friday. We didn't have the opportunity to uh, speak of this last week because we record on Wednesday. It's the... Um, move a uh, uh, mutual agreement between yourself and police chief paul govin uh, the chief will be stepping down as chief and will be resuming his duties his previous duties as captain of the major crimes uh, division in the police department let me ask you mayor uh, what what went into that uh, that this that mutual decision uh, a number of discussions throughout the last year um to myself and the chief we also met with the union both superior and patrolman um, and, you know, for the sake of the city and the department, the chief, the chief decided, uh, he would like to relinquish that role. Um, I believe, uh, that's a, a great move by him because it shows how selfless he is in trying to help the city. I think he'll, um, excel in his next position. And, um, I believe, uh, we're looking forward to some, uh, changes both in major crimes and in the, uh, in the, in the far police department. So let me ask you, how did you characterize, how would you characterize uh, his his uh, role and his performance as chief over the past couple of years? You know, it's funny because this, like I said, this is my uh, my third chief. I've only been here five years and they just keep going. But I, I thought about the same thing in relation to school superintendents. I thought, I think, uh, I think these jobs are very, very stressful. There's, there's tremendous scrutiny on the on the police right now throughout the country, whether it's uh, post in Massachusetts, particularly, or recruiting, or retention, or uh, community engagement. There are so many facets now in a police chief's job that it does put a tremendous stress on anyone that has that position. Um, and I think, you know, the chief uh, did a good, a good job while he was here, but he, uh, he decided that, um, you know, he may be better off doing something different. And, you know, we wish him well. We wish whoever replaces him well. And we want to see what uh, what the future holds for the Fire Police Department. I think overall, I think uh, the guys, the actual people on the streets, uh, the people in, in the main office, they all do a great job. They really, they really work hard. They're engaged. I, I mean, I refer to a police department as the face of the city of Fall River. Granted, all the other departments are important too, DCM, fire, EMS, EMA, they're all very, very important. But it just seems to me, when I look at it, the police are on the streets of Fall River every day, 24-7, 365 days a year. So it does bring in increased scrutiny. And uh, as I said, um, the chief and the, our police force do a great job and he, uh, he just felt it was time for a change. All right. And I know the next steps will be uh, you're looking to appoint an interim chief. Uh, what can you tell us about that process and how that's moving forward? Well, we met with some of the senior leadership at the police department and we talked to them about what their thoughts were on the direction of the department, how they looked at their role. And um, and for an interim position, which will be till May, um, I think, you know, you have four, four quality people we talked to and uh, we'll see what goes forward from there. I think... Uh, I think um, the Far River Police Department does a good job of, uh, you know, developing future talent. At the same time, you know, people are always like, well, let's go outside, let's go outside. And I understand the unique pressures are from the outside. We uh, we went outside with uh, a couple of last superintendents in the schools and, uh, and we had uh, fits and starts there. So, I mean, there, there's pros and cons no matter what we do. No matter what I do, I'll be second guessed by some, uh, praised by others, and that's part of my job. It's just that we have to work to see if we can put the best person in that slot right now to keep the police department moving forward. And so right now, the the, the plan is to uh, appoint an interim, 
But again, because the current chief's contract runs out in May, there'll be a process to appoint a more formal chief later on, correct? Correct. And, you know, Ed, he's, like I said, he's, he, he's, he's voluntarily stepping down um, and, and we're going to accommodate Paul to, uh, the best we can and we'll uh, see what we can do with him. All right, moving on, the uh, Four of Our Educators Association still negotiating with the uh, the school committee in terms of trying to come to terms on a new three-year contract. Uh, they've been working without a contract since school started in late August. The school committee held a special uh, meeting this week to go into executive session to discuss not only that contract negotiation, but others as well. Um, can you give us some insight, Mayor, in terms of, you know, uh, I know you can't get any, into any specifics in terms of uh, negotiations and offers that may be or not be on the table, but you know what generally is discussed in those meetings, and what role do you and the school committee play in working with those negotiating on behalf of the city uh, when you have those types of meetings? Well, our lead negotiator is Attorney Bruce Assad. He's done a number of contracts throughout the years, um, and he understands how this works, the ups and the downs. And uh, he comes in, and we sit around the table back in one of the music rooms, and we listen to the last set of proposals from the teachers. We match that up with the proposals we've made. And uh, then the seven of us, along with the superintendent, kick around ideas and things we may be able to do to, uh, to improve our offer. I know the teachers um, do the same thing. They sit around a table and look at things they could do to improve their offer. And at the same time, the sole goal is to um, get the teachers a fair contract and and build a, a strong teaching team for the city of Fall River. Um, I know going forward that um, we put some good offers on the table. I know that the teachers unions have um, pushed back on some and given us breaks on others. Uh, and we've done the same with their proposals. And that's what happens. Um, it's, it's a constant give and take. It's not just... Um, What's the percent raise and uh, how long is the contract for? It really, it, 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 that's one part of it, but there are so many other pieces that are involved, whether it's parental leave, length of day, um, breaks, sick leave, sick days, how, how all these things factor into a contract. And there's, that's just four or five, there's probably 15 or 20 when you look at all the different sections. And again, some sections may just be left alone no one has a suggestion in others the uh, administration may say let's adjust this and the next one might be the teacher saying let's adjust that so there are just so it, it's really when you go in and look at all the breakdown on all the paperwork there's so many pieces that are moving all the time um, when you have a staff of eight or nine hundred people there are just so many issues that come up and you want to try to do the best job you can for the uh, for the taxpayers at the same time knowing full well that we have um, our responsibility to recruit the best teachers to work with our kids. It's, uh, I know it's, uh, it's going to be um, a raise, a significant raise for our teachers. They've, that's been all over Facebook, so I'm not telling you anything different. Um, but I think the kids are worth it. I think uh, you want to attract the best teaching staff you can. You don't want to get left behind by neighboring communities that are paying X thousands more every time someone comes up for a job. So that's where we are. We're trying to make ourselves competitive, again, with the cooperation of the uh, FREA and uh, setting some goals to get this done. We, uh, we have another negotiating session scheduled and, and we'll be there. Um, and I'm sure they'll have some changes and um, I'm sure we'll have some changes too. All right, moving forward. Uh, last week, we touched a little bit upon uh, the uh, happenings going on in Pleasant Street. Of course, the city has done a uh, a plan to sort of revitalize uh that neighborhood and i guess some work has started uh on some storefronts and also some potential uh, infrastructure projects so tell us about yeah. that uh we met the other day uh the first storefront has started right now at white rose bakery i saw they tore down that old awning and uh they've gotten to work on that before they move up the street to gilbert's which is a, a three storefront a three business storefront that'll make the place look a lot better um, and again, we're waiting to hear from the person that bought those two uh, large buildings that have been eyesores on Pleasant Street for a long time. We, um, we have that grant from the federal government, um, and we're looking at the potential uses of that. 
whether it's um, sidewalks, streets, uh, period lighting. Um, some of the things we want to do to start beautifying uh, Pleasant Street. It takes a lot longer than I ever wanted it to, but um, I can see now um, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and progress has begun. Um, hopefully we can get some money into the Night Owl Diner and get that reopened again. That's the owner's goal and we'll work with them on that. These are all little pieces that kind of look, it's funny because it kind of looks disjointed as we go along here, but at the same time, as these pieces link up, I think we're going to get something going on Pleasant Street that uh, it's going to be much more attractive to the community, have some businesses in there that are moving, and um, go forward with this renovation. We've we've uh, we've just started to, uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. And finally this week, um, you know, uh, it's fall. We are officially beginning fall, and there's another uh, it's been a little while since there's been a drive-in at uh, Durfee High School at the uh, Chestnut Street um, the parking lot area. Uh, but there's going to be um, a Halloween event coming up uh, this weekend. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's going to be Hocus Pocus 2, October 4th. It's at the uh, the old Durfee Auditorium behind uh, Spencer Borden. Um, that movie's going to start around 7, but prior to that, we're going to have a bunch of people there doing trunk or treat for the kids. And hopefully we have some... Uh, we're going to have the haunted trolley and we're going to have some games for them to play and it's an evening out and uh, as you said with drive-ins it seemed like during covid they came roaring back but then they kind of faded out a little bit on us so we're not going to do as many but at the same time it's a nice night to get together with the family bring popcorn from your house and sit there and watch a movie just like in the old days of the drive-ins and uh, we would love to have a big crowd up there and and hopefully we'll see everybody there on friday night yeah. The weather is supposed to be nice as well. You know, I did say the weekend, but it's actually, as you said, it's Friday evening, this Friday, October 1st at uh, Durfee High School. All right, Mary Coogan, thank you for your time as always. We'll talk again soon. Okay. Thanks, Keith. All righty. And thank you for joining us here in FRC Media. Have a great rest of your week.